Bud Haggerty here. Welcome to another edition of I Can Fix That. Well, I hope I can fix it. What I have today is, it's my family piano. Um, I don't play the piano, but uh, some of the members at the house here tell me there's a little problem. So I'll try to demonstrate. If I'm on this chord right here, how nice that sounds. Now I go to the next, which is a minor. Hear that? That is not cool. Hear it? It's loud, loud, loud. You can't, you can't play any songs without that popping out. It, it is an electronic piano, so uh, we're gonna dive in and see if we can fix it. Here's a close up. I'll do this right here. Same tension. Now listen to this. Ooh, ooh. So that's our guy. I'm laying on my back. It looks like there's a couple of spots right here. I counted at least five Phillip head screws underneath there. We'll see if that gets this keyboard off. I don't know, but that'll be the first thing. Also on the corners, just to let you know, beautiful ears. I twisted both of these off. I'll put them up there. I'll, sh I'll show you. They, they allow me to take this block off, which is in the corner, and that block. So uh, we'll take those off. I'll take these screws off and see if I can get this keyboard out. Let me dive down here and get on it. Quite a long screw. It's not a wood screw, which is a good sign. That means it's in the, uh, to me, it's uh, being a, more of a machine screw. I think we might be on something. Okay, I found another three screws that were these right here, the long ones. And uh, the keyboard is completely loose in there, but I still can't get the thing out, so. I'll show you what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take this off right here. On the one side, I remove these two screws. By the way, I like to put all my hardware in a little container so you don't lose it. And you'll see right here, if I pull this up, right there are the two screws I took off on the other side. I believe if I take this off, I can take the whole cover off, giving me more uh, ability to look in there and see how to get this thing apart. It's kind of like, you know, an exploratory surgery. So the key is don't let this down while you have this screw in this position because you will scratch the heck out of your piano. Let's see if I can get that other one. Right there, boom. pushed it back in and it seems to be out of my way for now. So that's a that's success. Here's a kind of a look behind the scenes here. If you go to the right, all the way to the right of the piano, in the corner here, there's this. This used to be a, a floppy disk drive. You need to take the screws out around it, push it out of the way, and remove those two screws right there. Once you get those out of the way, this whole thing moves around a little bit. See it moving? That means over here, those two screws, when I remove them, I think we're gonna be in really good situation. Okay, I took those screws out, and this thing is loose on both sides, but there's still something holding it, and I put my hand down here, and right there, there's one more spot in the middle of the keyboard that has to have a screwdriver um, Phillips head removed. I can't really see it, but I can feel it. So I gotta remember that. That's a good, another good thing about videotaping when you do this. You'll kind of remember where everything's at. So that was the last screw. Hopefully this will come up semi-easy. 
And it, so far so good. I feel, no, there might be something else holding it. And there is. There's one more down here, which I can get to. I, again, I can feel them, but I can't see them. And the one thing is, they're beautiful wood screws, so uh, everything seems to be working out so far. Again, another wood screw. I'll put those in the jar. And again, moving this up very slowly now, I'm going to move it back out of the way. And you can see there's ribbon strips that connect the electronics to it. So I'm able to flip it up and we could get a pretty good look here. I'm gonna vacuum and clean all this up with a uh, paintbrush and a vacuum later. But uh, we're just in exploratory mode right now. I think we're in a good shape. Okay, we got that out of the way. Hopefully, I should be able to lift this whole piece up because it moves around in here. So I imagine I'll be able to lift it up, but I gotta be careful because it's connected electronically somewhere. I imagine on the bottom, it, that's where it's connected. So I am going to treat this with really kid gloves when I lift it up. Just very light. It's heavy. I can tell you that right now. I pick it up on its side and take a look. And there are ribbon cables. There's a ribbon cable here. And I'm gonna take this one off too and I'll show you once I get them off, okay, there's the two ribbon cables off. It looks like that's it. Look at that. This thing is heavy. Look at this. This is pretty much my whole piano. There it is. So we're going to take this into the uh, other area. Okay, these are the two ribbon cables that that's the whole keyboard is connected with that ribbon cable and that ribbon cable. A ribbon cable, it's just a cable that's flat that has multiple wires in it. So that's it. That's the whole deal down here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna vacuum and clean all this up before we put everything back. This is a beautiful uh, paintbrush. I am not going to paint the piano on the inside. It is used for vacuuming it out. Here we, we spruced her up a little bit, so this will be ready when we're uh, ready to put her back together, and hopefully it'll work. Okay, now that we got it all apart, here's a great side view of the piano keyboard, um, and what I'm showing you is the mechanical um, push down on the key. You can see right here those two little teeth, those plastic. They're the ones that tr change the mechanical movement into electronic. It pushes down and that's the circuit board below. This is where I think the problem is. Every one of these keys has that little point where it touches. I think that there's a spot that's gonna be dirty right there causing that problem. So uh, that's a great side look as you can tell. Okay, now we got the keyboard out and on the table. Uh, again, the problem is right there, E flat. So what I'm gonna do before I flip it over, I'm gonna mark it with a little crayon on the back side here, back over here. That way when I flip this whole thing over, I have a reference of where it's at, even though we're gonna take a look at everything. What I'm gonna do is remove all these screws here all these screws as we go down and this is the halfway point of the keyboard right there see the two circuit boards are split and I'm gonna take them all off well first we'll go go to the side where we see the problem and then uh, clean it all up and probably clean the other side since we got it all apart there's the spot where I marked it so again, it's that key, and the area will be right here. 
just to give myself a reference where I want to do a little extra cleaning. I'll start over here and start taking these guys off. Okay, I got them all off. I took this little ribbon cable off and I'm gonna flip it up. And there they are. This, there's a lot of dirt and debris here that we'll have to clean up, but I'm gonna pull these off as well to clean the board. But this is where I think the problem is. It's gonna be right around here. We're gonna clean them all anyway. We're gonna go in there and clean all these sections out. But before I do that, I might as well take the other side off because I said, once you're in here, why not do the whole entire board? It'd be very frustrating to put it all back together and then another key mess up. So, stand by one. Okay, I got all the other screws off and this should pop up as it does. Okay, this is a pretty good close up. You can see the debris between the two uh, plungers that transfer the uh, signal. So even though this is rubber, it only takes a little dirt to get underneath that. So what we're gonna do is peel these off and clean it with isopropyl alcohol. We'll move this away for now and uh, just work with this one first. So we don't need to complicate things more. And I'll pull this off. They pull right off. I can see debris flying around when I take it off. There. They're all off. Okay, here's what I'm gonna use to clean this. Little alcohol and Q-tips. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean this whole board with that. And the alcohol will dry. Again, they have electronic board cleaner you can use if you really wanna get the right stuff, this, but this'll work. So we're gonna go through these. I'm gonna work, the, I'm gonna go down this whole board right here. Okay, there's the Q-tip. I'm also kinda of cleaning a little bit around the other parts of the board since I got it off. As much as on both sides of it as I go down, even not the contact points, I'm just cleaning up a little bit around here. If I see any debris. This is a lot of gunk over the, oh, and you can, I could tell right now. Let me show you. Look at this thing, let me zoom in on that guy. Look at that. It's like a nicotine, even though nobody smokes in the house. So I'm gonna clean the whole board up, and then we do that to the other side as well. There's some of the product, the Q-tips I used to clean. Uh, there was a lot of dirt and grime on the board. It's all cleaned off now. I also took a Q-tip and went around in all these areas as well and let it dry. Remember, you gotta let it dry completely with the alcohol. 70% alcohol, I don't know what the other 30% is, but you gotta let it dry completely because you do not want to short this thing out. Um, definitely, uh, it'll, it'll dry very fast, but make sure there's no fluid anywhere before you ever fire this thing back up. Okay, now we'll after it's all clean, I put this section back together already, this section here, and I'm gonna put this section back. I'm just gonna flip it back over. It's all dried out. Um, just so you know, there is a difference between the heights in there of the two right here, the two contacts, one's taller than the other. So that would be very critical to get that right. That's why when I take stuff apart, I try to keep it close orient and also, we have this for a guide. I actually flipped this back up to double check. But when I flip this over, it'll be right back where it needs to be. So I pop that guy on and it's pretty self-explanatory where these go. As you can see, this goes right there. And we just squish them in. 
these little guys, it has little tiny holes there, but you'll push everything down. Go through the whole thing, get it seated. It's pretty easy. They're straightforward. There's nothing, there's no tricks about it. The only thing I will say is the last one over here, this guy right here, he has one extra on it. They're all not the same size. So let me get to it and I'll show what it looks like when we're done. As you can see, I got them all back in place. I want you to pay good attention to all these little doodads right here, all the way around, even the four. Make sure they're all protruding through. They gotta be coming through. That means everything's seated real nice here. It's all cleaned and properly seated. And I can tell there's nothing sticky on this board. I let it dry out real well, and I think we're ready to start putting it back together. Okay, now we're gonna put it back together. This one will go on first. I'm gonna go over here. There's a pin here and a pin here, and that's gonna be my guide. Once I pop those in, there and there, it kind of guides it to where it needs to be. And you, could, you can't move it, so it's, you know it's in. Again, on this one here, they got a pin right here. So I will use that pin as my reference. And once you get that down, boom, you feel that's in. The next thing I'm gonna do is put this back together right here, because I do not want to forget that. I just pushed it back down, make sure the ribbon cable is connected right there. From there, well, it's to reverse what we did on the way out. I'm just gonna start adding some uh, screws and a whole bunch of them. I won't tighten them down all the way because I'll do a final check to make sure everything's seated properly. I don't like to put anything in real tight for the first time, just loose along the way. Uh, matter of fact, I'll even go to the other end here to make sure these guys are going into the right spot so everything feels good. Yeah, that looks good. But I'll finish this up and get back with you, but obviously you can handle that. Okay, I got them all in except one. The reason this one is right here and not down there is of course it fell out of my hand and after spending some time trying to find that guy on the floor, we've all been through that, I eventually found it again about 20 feet from the scene of the crime. But this is the last one going in. Make sure it's tight, not right there. I've got the keyboard back in the proper spot. In, well, not the proper spot, I got it back in the piano. The ribbon cable's gotta go back in. The two ribbon cables, very crucial. One here, and the other one. Let me get this one back in first. Push, but both fingers, push with both fingers to make sure that's connected properly and seated right before you put pressure on it. If it doesn't go together smooth, don't force it. That went really smooth, and I all can tell by the bend that was there from before. So both my ribbon cables are connected back. My little ribbon cable that we know we connected, I just double check that. This guy is ready to be placed back in the right spot by flipping it down, and let's try to get her down in there. All right. When I took this apart, let me get over here. When I took this apart, I took at nine of these machine screws to loosen this keyboard up. Um, knowing that how this goes back together, I feel I should secure the keyboard first. So I'm going to put back all nine. I'm going to go under here and put all nine of these machine screws to get this locked into place. Then I'll try to secure that back on. We'll go from there. But that's just the way I, I think to do it. I, di I didn't even have to lay on my back. I put uh, the eight of them basically by feel. And here's the last one, the ninth one. And I'm doing it by hand. I'm screwing them in by hand. The reason I'm doing that, I wanna make sure those threads are going in nice and smooth. And I can't damage the threads with my hand. So it, the keyboard just retire, requires a little touch when I was first starting them off. but. All these other ones are in now. I can feel it. I can spin every one of them with my hand. 
meaning I'm not gonna be able to damage any threads and everything's going together beautiful. So I'll take the screwdriver, tighten all nine of them down right now. Okay, I installed them all. I said there were nine, um, but there actually is eight. Um, so I'll do what most politicians do when something like this happens. They say, I, I misspoke. So uh, there is uh, eight of them, not nine, but three there and then five up here. So everything is tight. This is really good shape right here. Boom, boom, boom. All right, now we're gonna try to put this piece back, secure it, put the cover back on, and I think we're home free. This kinda right here, this thing sets right back in the place here. You can feel it lock in. Secure it, two screws there, one here, one here, and two over there. That's what will secure this into place. Okay, so the wood screws, one of them there, they go right here. Again, I like to try to hand start them, even though they're wood screws. I can screw them in pretty far without even using my screwdriver. Look at there, they're both there. And again, I'm not gonna tighten them all the way. Just gonna get them in a little tighter and then move on because if you tighten them all the way down, you, you might need a little minor adjustments to line up other holes. Okay, I got it back together. The wife's home. She, um, we, we turned it on, so that's a good sign. I'm not putting it all the way back together, but I wanna have you experience if it's fixed or not. I haven't checked it. We haven't done this. This is not staged. This is a live uh, filming. Oh, so Stacia, give me that note that, that will let me know if it's fixed or not. What, do you want me to just press it? Cause no, I want you to play the song or something okay. that has that it has steps over that. But yes. it's not immediate, let's see. That's too loud. That's it's too, too loud. loud. Let's see. Okay. Mama just fixed a piano maybe. Wait, here I go. Let's see. Yes. I got it. Did I fix it? Yes, you did. Did I fix it? Now that we know it works, which is very exciting, um, the last part is I put that side on and I put this side on. These two screws, there's one here, one here, one that, that's all that holds this whole device, this whole cover. So you tighten these two up right here. Just double checking it since I got you here. Right there and there. And I've already done that at the other end. That makes this whole thing work. I didn't take it all the way out. Maybe there's a way of, but I just put it back there ever so gingerly where it didn't hurt anything. And it worked out real well. Um, all the keys are clean. Everything's ready to go. I think, uh, we're ready to make some music. That's all for this episode of I Can Fix That. Hope it helped you. If it did, uh, leave a comment if you would and uh, subscribe to this channel because it helps. Thanks.